This is Aaron Coesworth with ETBN. We're here today with John Wofford from the Lilly Company. The Lilly Company is headquartered in Memphis, Tennessee, and has branches throughout the, the Southeast. John, tell us just a little bit about what the Lilly Company does. The Lilly Company is a material handling supplier. And for those who don't know what that is, that means we sell forklifts and anything that goes in and out of a warehouse. We sell new and used products, we sell service, we provide parts, we have rentals. And in many ways, our business operates a lot like an automobile dealership does. Uh, but the main difference is we have so many more options to sell our customers. Um, another way of putting it is we're a solutions provider for anyone who has a warehouse that moves products. So John, one of the things that I found fascinating about the Lilly Company, from what I know, is the age of the company that makes it very much unique. Tell me a little bit about the age of the Lilly Company and how it started off. So our company is 100 years old. It was founded in 1919 by Thomas F. Lilly. Thomas was a very inventive person who was able to see the need in the marketplace and provided bulk size quantities to other businesses by breaking them down. Mr. Lilly broke these, these pieces down from larger sizes to, to smaller, made it better for businesses to be able to handle those sizes. And then didn't he get into uh, the ice distribution trade? So early part of the 19th century, refrigeration hadn't been invented yet. So everyone received their ice by the ice man coming and taking a big block of ice off the ice truck. They would use tongs and they would come in and you would have three different sizes and you would leave a little uh, placard in your window and tell the ice man exactly what size. They would take that ice, bring it inside, put it in a refrigerator, not a refrigerator, but in a box. It's called the ice box. Uh, all of us who have country relatives know that an ice box is just that. You, it's a box to put your ice in. So if somebody needed to put ice in a beverage, they would have to take an, uh, an ice pick and, and pick off a piece of ice. So he saw a need. So he created a device. The invention was called the ice sizer. And essentially what would happen is you would have small, medium, and large pieces that would get bagged, and then they could deliver them to the customers. So he was in the ice uh, industry working with end customers, but eventually that industry started to disappear. How, how did he get from ice and from being an inventor to material handling? If you think about it, really everything that we've done at the Lilly Company revolves around handling some type of material. So as the ice business began to dwindle, and it began to dwindle because of refrigeration being invented in World War II. Not many good things come out of war, but in this case, something did come out of it, and then that was the invention of refrigeration. So he sees the, the horizon coming that the ice business is going to dwindle. So he begins looking for different opportunities to expand and change his uh, and adapt his business to an ever-changing climate. At that time, forklifts were not that common, and we began to be uh, a servicing dealer for a company called Yale in Town. Yale in Town, better known today as Yale Forklifts, um, we, we, we were a servicing dealer and a parts dealer for them. It wasn't long after that that we were made a full-fledged dealer, meaning that we sold new products uh, from, directly from the factory. And from that point on, it's been strictly lift trucks and, and warehouse products exclusively. One of the things that I, I heard in that is he saw the horizon. As you're dealing with business, one of the things that you have to be doing if you're the owner, if you're one of the operators, if you're one of the CEO level individuals, is you have to be looking at what's coming. You have to be looking at the future. Well, in our country today, something happened at the beginning of this year that I don't think very many people were seeing the horizon. Absolutely. For, and that's the coronavirus. COVID-19 hit our shores and the economy shut down. Tell me a little bit about the Lilly Company's experience when that happened. So for us, we were lucky when the whole COVID situation began to develop. We were, our business and our industry was deemed essential, which was good because we never had to close the doors. And we didn't, we worked just like we normally would with the exception of a few changes. And those changes were those people who could work from home 
did work from home, but our doors remained open. We were not quite as busy as we had been, but all in all, we were pretty fortunate because the, the level of business that our industry was seeing was still moderately good. We know that there are a lot of industries and a lot of businesses that were devastated by that. But for us, uh, it was you know it was a reduction in, in what we were used to seeing, but at the same time, we still kept the doors open. Our technicians were busy. They were servicing equipment. There were still plenty of things going on for us. What, what kind of businesses use forklifts and, and those kind of material handling devices. And, and you know, what, what all changes did you see amongst your customers? One of the things that we noticed as the COVID situation began is that we were not being allowed as even salespeople to come in. Our service technicians were not being allowed to come in. And it, to some degree, we're still seeing a little bit of that now. As the economy is opening back up, our technicians are getting back in more frequently uh, rather than just in emergency situations. Our sales guys are just now beginning to go and have, make customer visits. So your headquarters is in Memphis. Right. You've got locations throughout the Southeast. Do you primarily work with in just the metropolitan bigger cities or do you also work in some of the more rural areas? Obviously our, our headquarters is in a metropolitan area in Memphis but we function, a lot of our branches are in smaller areas. For example, in Dothan, Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama, Tupelo, Mississippi, none of those being a very heavily populated, although they're bigger than what they used to be, they're still not considered a metropolitan area. As you're working in these smaller areas, do you see much difference between how those economies are coming back from coronavirus and from the effects of COVID-19? I think that really depends on what industry they're in. The, obviously, there are certain industries that either manufacture or produce products that are, let's call them non-essential. Whereas other businesses, whether it be warehousing or just your, your basic distribution complexes, those of course are gonna thrive. So as we think back to where this all started with Mr. Lilly, he saw the horizon and he saw that his product, ICE deliveries, and ha had a short-term lifespan. Do you see in your world and in your economy, in your business, do you see long-term fundamental problems in the economy? Or do you see people going back to work? And do you see the economy getting moving again just based upon what's happening in your in your business? So, well, if you watch the news on television, or if you read a paper or read the paper online, you're gonna hear doom and gloom and that the economy is in a very bad situation. And I suppose for, for some industries and for some businesses, there, there's some truth to that. Uh, certainly there are a lot of people without jobs and they're, they're struggling. From our perspective and what we see in our business and in our industry, uh, the, the outlook is a little bit more positive. We see people working. We see people buying products. We see people still manufacturing products. There's still a need. People are going to continue to eat. People are going to do the things that they need to do. Whether they do it from home or from their office, that may be different, but they're still going to be consumers. Our business, because of what we do and what we provide, whether it's equipment or services, Anything that someone buys is going to be delivered to them, and we've touched that at some point. People may not think about that directly, about how much forklifts impact their life, but they do. Whether they realize it or not, the, all of the products and services that they purchase, whether online or in stores, have been touched some way by our products. Maybe it's the fact that the forklift was broken down and we serviced that, that kept them going and kept their manufacturing process rolling. Or maybe it's just the fact that we helped them load a truck. That's great to hear. The outlook seems to be good. The future seems to be bright. And I think in a lot of places and a lot of parts of this economy, it is much brighter than especially the media would, would proclaim it. We definitely understand there are people struggling. We definitely understand there are people dealing with health issues that they weren't expecting because of this virus. But 
it's good, especially here in the state of Tennessee, to have a business that is thriving and that's moving forward in this economy in spite of the difficulties. Some would say that the outlook is gloom and doom, but that's not really what we're seeing. That's not a true picture. Yes, people are out of work. Yes, people are affected by a physical disease. But we're seeing that products are still flowing. We're seeing that people are still working. People are wanting to be back to work. They enjoy their jobs. They want to do, they want to be productive. And we're seeing that. The, the amount of people that we see and touch every day is more and more. You know, go back two weeks, month, seeing almost no one. Now we're beginning to see more and more businesses open up and that we're able to get back in. And it, again, it's probably never going to be normal like it used to be, but whatever new normal is, we're seeing it and it's evolving and things do look positive. They really do. That's great news. And we want to say from ETBN, thank you for coming and spending this time with us. Thank you for giving us this insight and this glimpse into the story of the Lilly Company and your business that you and, and those at the Lilly Company are involved in building that moves this economy forward. Thank you for doing the work that you're doing and thank you for being involved in helping those around you, building those businesses, keeping those businesses running because without material handling, so much of this economy would just fall to pieces. We really appreciate what the Lilly Company is doing. We appreciate you being in Memphis, in the state of Tennessee, and we hope that the future is very bright in your business and in your future. Thank you for that. We appreciate it. And we're certainly glad to, to do whatever we can to help out uh, in any way that we can. And I appreciate you having me on.